Hi, everybody. It's Elizabeth from Alpus Astrology at alpusastrology.com. Thanks for joining me today. So today, this is my take on September 2022 astrology. And as per usual, I'm just giving you my take on what I see. Uh, it's up to you to do what you want with the aspects in your chart and how it's affected you. So, you know, when we look at September, <clears throat> I thought it was really interesting that by mid-month, literally, we will have um, all the outer planets will be retrograde and all the inner personal planets will be direct. And for me, this said that the latter half of September is probably going to be a big time period where people make a lot of decisions and movement forward with regards to what <clears throat> anything to do with Venus and communications. Venus in particular, so we're talking about relationships. It could be friendships too, um, love relationships, uh, but also money, right? Venus is also money, and we also have our values that type of thing. So look to mid-month for those folks that maybe do need to or want to make decisions um, to maybe get a more uh, easily um, established change forward. So when we look, uh, first of all, uh, at the 4th of September this year, we are looking at Venus going direct. And Venus goes direct at 12 degrees of Leo. So certainly if you've got something around this degree point, this may be a significant time for you. And you can always take days on either side of it too, right? Now, the other thing is um, that this 12 degree mark is pretty close to a star called Acubens. And Acubens has um, sort of a combination of um, energies that uh, different folks have ascribed to it. But basically, I got out of it this whole word of perseverance. So I, I thought associated with this Venus going direct with some perseverance as well. And I just thought that settled nicely for me with regards to Venus going direct on this day. Um, I also wanted to mention too that um, it's nice to hear other astrologers mentioning uh, yods. You don't hear it that often, but um, I think I was the first one to mention it in January in my uh, Venus retrograde in Leo video, the yod that was appearing um, basically around that 28 degree mark of um, uh, Leo when uh, Venus went retrograde. Um, so anyway, a shout out to myself, I guess. Okay, so we've got Venus goes direct right at the beginning, the first week of uh, September. Now, next we have the new moon in Virgo. And I've just got to say, I really like this new moon. Now I know there's some things going on with regards to Mercury uh, being retrograde at this time. Mercury will be going retrograde at this new moon in um, uh, Virgo. The new moon will be at 6.39 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time, and it will be at 21 Virgo, 58 minutes. And I wanted to put a shout out to um, my significant other, as well as editor Noah, his birthday is exactly on this day. So happy birthday, Noah. And a big happy birthday to my brother, Philip who has his birthday the day before. So both of these guys are going to be affected in a positive way um, of newness in their life for the following year. That's how it works. Now we do have um, the ruler of Virgo, which of course is Mercury, uh, is still retrograde um, and it will be retrograded about eight degrees of Virgo. And of course, this is the degree point that Mercury will uh, in a few days, uh, or actually the next day, go direct. So it really is just a matter of around, you know, not even quite 24 hours of the new moon in Virgo that Mercury will go direct. So I really take this as a positive effect, even though technically Mercury is still retrograde at the new moon. Um, certainly the following day, I would say is going to be excellent for maybe getting some information to come through. When we look at Mercury in Virgo, we're really talking about, sure, messages and communications, but ones of import, of ones of significance, uh, something that um, means something. It's just not a lot of data. It's data that actually has some meaning behind it. And so for those folks that maybe were struggling with some kind of data, information, messages, that sort of thing, um, look to this day, the 15th, 
the day after the new moon, as perhaps some time period of clearing up and then continual clearing up for the rest of the month. All right, other things that we have at this new moon in Virgo um, include the moon and the sun trining retrograde Uranus. Oh, this, I thought, even though it's retrograde, I love this trine. Trine always brings in favorable energy, right? It brings in easy energy. It's not difficult to do things. What is it not difficult to do? To change something, to do something new, right? Uranus is about change. Sure, it can be unexpected. So for those folks that uh, were looking for a change to happen, this may be ushered in at this new moon. Um, the other thing I thought as well was that um, because the moon and the sun are directly affected together, this could be also a, um, a more emotional, right? Emotional change at this time too, as well as perhaps a physical change because the moon and the sun stand for different things, but they're together here at this trine. So I really like this idea of change for newness in our lives. Now, the other thing that Virgo uh, represents besides uh, data and things like that, that is important, it also stands for our health, right? Our physical health, our mental health. So this could also be something where newness uh, suddenly comes in and we can see this positive change in our life. It also has to do with service. So if there's any uh, connection here with regards to service, say a job that you are applying for that has to do with service, this could unexpectedly usher that in for you too. Now we will have Venus uh, squaring Jupiter. And as I've mentioned in other videos, it's really hard to get a, a bad aspect when we have Jupiter in the mix. So I don't see this square uh, as anything really, really bad. It can bring in for some folks uh, a sort of passive way of thinking or being on this day of the new moon. Um, but it can also be, you know, a time period where we can experience love. I mean, Venus and uh, Jupiter together are lovely, lovely energies. And even though it's a square, that's okay. It could be that, you know, you don't do anything to attract in, that's Venus, um, this expression of love. Someone expresses their love to you on this day. Um, that could happen with this as well. But generally speaking, uh, it would be really people just being a little more passive and um, not taking any like direct action with regards to that square effect, right? Okay, so we also have this month, we have the autumn or fall equinox. And that uh, on Pacific Daylight Time is going to be on the 22nd of September this year. And that's when the sun ingresses or goes into Libra at zero degrees and zero minutes. That's at 11.49 p.m. Pacific time. So certainly for those on the East Coast, it would be the next day, the 23rd. And I put the chart up here uh, for you to look at and uh, see if anything maybe stands out for you with regards to your own chart. Because if it does, then that could be um, a time period. It's approximately a time period of about three months where you may have some kind of uh, interesting activations of some sort to do with the um, autumn or fall equinox. So when we look at the next lunation, it is the full moon in Aries. So we're not talking about an eclipse here yet, although we do have the north nodes in Aries. It is on the 29th of September at 2.58 Pacific Daylight Time, and it's at six degrees of Aries exactly and zero minutes. Now I just wanted you to note for those folks that like to plan ahead, like me, um, we are going to have an eclipse very close to this degree. That's also a full moon, but it's a full moon eclipse. It will be at five degrees of Libra. And the reason I say that it's close, even though this one is in Aries, this full moon, and the eclipse is in Libra, full moons put the moon in one place and then the sun in the other, or vice versa, right? So on the 25th of March, 2024, uh, we will have the sun that's going to be in the same degree as this full moon 
in Aries at 6 degrees on the 29th of September. So what does that mean? It means that there's kind of two lots of culminations here. Um, and depending what houses you're, you're looking at. So look first of all to the house that Aries falls in, especially the degree of six degrees Aries. And then look to the opposite house and see what's there. What, what house is that? And so pay attention to both those houses because both those houses are up for some kind of culmination, some kind of endings, or a very big illumination, just like a full moon becomes so bright, right in the sky. All right, just a little heads up. I'll still, you know, I will cover that uh, eclipse in March for sure. Um, now, also at this full moon, what else do we have happening here? Um, well, we have Mars, which is the rulers of Aries, is in its de detriment because then it's in the opposite sign, 21 degrees of Libra. But it is conjunct the south nodes. Um, in turn, that Mars is also sextile to Venus. Now, this setup says to me, especially when we talk about uh, Mars, the ruler of the moon, conjunct the south, the transiting south nodes, it really kind of puts an emphasis on letting things go, right? A lot of times we talk about the south nodes as where we need to let go of something. And so I really saw this, this full moon as a letting go of some things as well. So again, look to where you have Aries and where you've got Libra. It's those two places that are going to be affected. But because we've got this sextile to Venus, Venus puts a little sweetness in there. But Venus makes things a little nicer. So I would say uh, for those folks that maybe, let's just say you want to end a relationship or end a friendship for that matter. This Venus being here by sextile gives you the opportunity to make things nice to make it easier, to make it sweeter, right? And it does bring in something favorable, potentially with regards to love, because Venus and Mars together, right, uh, are the celestial lovers. Um, and Venus, of course, is still in Leo. Leo rules things like true love and new love. So even though this is a full moon, that element can be brought in. And, and I'm thinking uh, some folks, not everybody, but some folks will have decided, probably during the whole uh, Venus retrograde period, to let go either of a relationship or let go of a way of doing that relationship and making a concrete change. Like, you know, those signposts of, I'm now going this way. Or, like I said, letting go of a relationship or maybe a friendship at this time. But then this full moon can actually usher in an opportunity for a new uh, relationship to come in or a new friendship. Now, it can also indicate money, uh, but more strongly because, you know, we've got Mars in Libra and Libra rules relationships. I have a more focus, I would say, on relationships, but it could bring in opportunities to make money too for some folks. Maybe make money in the entertainment industry, right? Because that is, of course, in many respects, Leo, right? Getting on the stage. Or creative projects could come in also under this as well. Um, let me see what else. Yeah, I think that kind of covers what I wanted to cover. Um, Mercury is going to be direct at this point. Um, and it will be trining uh, Uranus. So I saw this as very favorable too. Um, and I didn't mention that Mercury does go direct um, on the 15th of September. Well, actually I did mention it. Um, so that's okay. I've already mentioned that. Um, what I'd like to do though, is talk about this whole Mercury now direct. So that's positive, positive messages, uh, messages flowing freely, our thoughts working better. Uh, widely trining Uranus says some kind of excitement here with regards to, um, if it's an inner thing, it's our inner thoughts become excited and, um, sort of more motivated to do things, to change things. Um, you can maybe get these thoughts about, hey, I can see how I can make these changes now in whatever area of your life. Um, this can also bring in just straight positive change, right? Um, just generally speaking. So for those folks that were maybe affected by this <clears throat> whole Mercury retrograde, now that we've got it direct at this full moon, 
This could be a, a positive time of favorable change that comes unexpectedly. And maybe it's unexpectedly in our thoughts. We get a little bit of an aha or um, an enlightenment of some sort. Or we get a message out of the blue coming through that is really positive because it facilitates this change that we want to make. And in Aries, we're talking about a change. Um, we're talking now because we've got the influence here of the full moon, which is in Aries, to be independent, right? Okay. The other thing that we've got at this full moon is a yod again. And the yod at its base has Uranus at 22 of um, <clears throat> uh, Taurus. And then we've got, uh, we've got the um, Neptune at 25 degrees of um, Pisces. And it is pointing to the south node at 24 degrees of Libra. Wow, I thought this is like a real message in the sky that says, you know, be inspired to let go of things that you need to let go of. Um, now, when we talk about Libra, which is what this whole uh, yod is pointing to, and it being the south nodes, it's like the path we've been taking with regards to relationships, with regards to friendships, our, our social, the way we act socially, um, that type of thing, diplomatic type stuff. It says to me with this yod that there's an opportunity here to let go of the way you were doing those. Now with Neptune, it's kind of like a philosophy. So it might be tied in here with a philosophy that we need to think outside the box. We need to make change. And that's the element of Uranus here. Okay, I hope that helps you. The other thing I wanted to mention about uh, September 2023 as an overall energy is that <clears throat> Pluto moves to 27 degrees of Capricorn, and it stays there all of October at that degree as well, but it will be retrograde. So this is more inward transformation. So I saw this as a positive thing in the sense of um, Pluto's all about you know transforming ourselves. It's about seeing the truth. I think as an inward thing with the retrograde, I really felt that Pluto was extending its transformational energy to help us make the changes that we need, um, especially as we come into that full moon at the end of September. Um, but remember, Pluto also helps us see the truth. Whether we want to see it or not, of course, is a different matter. Okay, so... When we look at October, as I mentioned, uh, Pluto will be um, going uh, direct at 27 degrees of um, Capricorn at this time. Um, there will be a new moon at 21 degrees of Libra. And we've got the last full moon eclipse at 5 degrees of Taurus. That was in that whole axis of Taurus and Scorpio. And that's at 5 degrees. We also will have Mars in Libra as well. So kind of a big activation of all Libra type stuff. And of course, remember, this is where the south nodes are by transit at this time. Um, I wanted to mention that um, when I reach 10,000 subscribers, which will hopefully be soon, I've decided I will do my first live video. So what do you need to do as a viewer or subscriber? You definitely need to be subscribed to my channel to get notification of this, but you also have to hit that bell. By hitting the bell as well as subscribing, it sends you all the updates and notifications, including the live um, YouTube that I will be doing when I reach that 10,000 uh, mark. But I will do my best to reach out to people and let people know. But that is what I've decided to do for my viewers and my clients when I reach that 10 K subscriber. If you see the 10,000 mark come up on my subscribers, you know that I will shortly be doing a live video with everyone. Um, I haven't decided what the actual subject's going to be. Obviously, it's going to be astrology, but I might just leave it wide open uh, with regards to people reading their charts, because it seems to me that's the most 
difficult thing for a lot of people. And um, so I think that's probably what I'll focus on, something to do with reading your chart um, and how to more easily read your chart as an individual without relying on people like me. All right, folks, let's move on now to the um, individual signs and ascendants. So for Aries, Aries, this new moon in Virgo, as well as the Mercury retrograde go and going direct, is in your sixth house. So really this speaks to what? A couple things. For those that are working, this is your day-to-day -day job. So there's some new beginning there. For those that don't work or are retired, this is just some new a start with regards to the habits that you have or the day-to-day -the -day things that you do. And because we've got this favorable trine with Uranus, there may be some unexpected opportunities that come in for you. Now, generally speaking, this is going to be new opportunities for some Aries for a new job, um, for a new way of actually doing their health, whether it's their mental health or their physical health. And with Mercury going uh, direct mid-month, I would say you may get some very good news, maybe some help with regards to uh, somebody coming in, giving you information that can help facilitate positive new starts in this area of your life. For others, it could be something as pleasant as um, some Aries actually deciding to get a small animal of some sort, because the sixth house can also rule that too. It's also the house of service, the sixth house. Um, so it could have a combination of some folks where they combine a new job that has a service element associated with that new job. But this could probably, possibly come in all unexpectedly with that favorable trine at this new moon with Uranus. When we look at the full moon in Aries, well, of course, Aries, this is your first house. So there's some kind of big illumination happening at this time. Now, don't forget you have the North Nodes here too, transiting North Nodes, and you have Chiron here as well. And so all this is also facilitating um, healthier things in your life, healing, that type of thing. And healing could be all part of you healing your inner side of yourself. All right, so for Aries, that full moon in Aries is in your first house. And so this speaks to all new sort of beginnings in some respects, because it's your first house, beginnings and endings, because you've also got the North Nodes there too, right? And so I would say that for some Aries, they're going to be ending something with regards to something in their life. The first house is every aspect of you. It's the things inside you, it's the things around you, outside you. And because the North Nodes are here, I really see this as an ending's going to provide a new beginning for you with regards to your destiny path, that you need to let go of a way of doing things um, and go forward. You're going to be having eclipses, new moon eclipses, mostly in your sign Aries over the next over a year. And I'll cover those, of course, as we have them happen. All right. Take care, Aries. All right, everybody. Um, as always, I would love to do your chart. Um, I leave all my contact details below here. Please feel free to reach out to me. I love hearing from everybody. Leave comments. I will always get back to you. Please take good care of yourself. And um, I look forward to chatting with you soon. Take care, everyone. Bye for now.